Hello and welcome back to the Bramble Patch Tutorials. My name is Wendy and on Technicals today we have Alicia. Today we're going to be continuing uh, from last week's tutorial. Last week uh, we looked at how to do the flip and stitch technique uh, so that your block is quilted as you actually construct it and this can be done by doing it so it's uh, pieced on one side and plain on the other with one piece of fabric or you can actually piece it on one side and piece it also on the opposite side. So today what we're going to do, we're going to look at how we actually um, now construct it and do the quilt as you go technique to actually put the blocks together. So uh, as you can see behind once again we've got this beautiful quilt uh, which is the Bramble Patch quilt. Uh, this is the block and what we're going to do today, we're going to look at how you actually put uh, these sessions between it. Now, as you can see, this is the cream and red on one side with the cream uh, sessions uh, throughout it to make, to join the blocks together. And on this side, uh, we've got it with the blue. So you really, really can mix and match. Um, as long as you've got a binding that works with both color tones uh, to actually border it as you tidy the edges up, uh, that actually works really, really nicely. So let's take a look at how we do it. I've chosen to do the, uh, the sessions in black because I'm hoping that they might show up better for me um, as we're looking at it. So this here, um, I'm hoping that you can see, um, is the way that I've joined these two blocks together. Uh, this, these particular blocks are just a single fabric on the back but it is quilted all the way through. So first of all, I'm going to take the two blocks that we looked at last week, which are these two. Uh, and these are the ones with the um, plain fabrics on the back. When I say plain, I mean one piece of fabric. And uh, when I put these together, um, I've done them so that they actually angle, so that they'll start and for, form uh, like a diamond formation um, on the corners. So these have been squared up to 10 inch squares. Your blocks do need to be the same size. So I'm actually working with a 10 inch square. Now, the fabric that we're going to have running through it, I like to do the narrow sashings. You can vary the width, but I'm going to be working so that the piece of fabric we're having on the top, we are going to cut just one inch in width. So the one for the front is cut one inch wide. The fabric that I'm going to be using for the back sashing, which is also going to be black, black in this case, is going to be cut one and a half inches wide. The strip that's for the back, that's one and a half inches wide, you are then going to press in half, just like you would when you do a binding. So your one and a half inch strip is actually pressed in half, wrong sides together. Right, so we'll just set those aside for now. So I'll work on the yellow one I think to start with because I'm hoping that you might be able to see it. So what I'll do is I'll join this, this is the side I'm actually going to add my sashing to. So if I take my sashing that measures one inch wide. Now, if you want to cut it exactly to size, you can, or you can do it a little bit longer. It's your choice entirely. I tend to cut it a little bit longer, like so. And this is one technique where it's probably best if you do pin, or you can use the clips as well. It's your choice, whatever is works for you better. So first of all, I have already got my one and a half inch strip pressed in half wrong sides together and my one inch strip. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place my one inch strip right side down on my block. I'm then going to take my one and a half inch strip that's folded in half with the raw edges 
So they are meeting the raw edges of the block that I'm working with. So these are the raw edges of the back strip. This is the raw edge of the block and the raw edge. So like I say, the top strip must have the wrong side, the right foot side facing down. And then what you need to do, you need to make sure they are all level. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop a pin in the edge to make sure they're all sitting nice and flush. Don't stretch the fabric, just let it, just lay on it and sit nicely. Like so. Now it's up to you how frequently you put the pins. You may prefer to, to place them every inch, um, every couple of inches, whatever works for you the best. So I'm just going to pop those in like so. So just to recap, I've got the one inch fabric on the top, right side facing down. Then I've got a piece at the back folded in half, wrong sides together with the raw edge on the inside. And all I'm going to do now, I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down this side. And this is why I prefer to have a little bit over because if it does move a little bit, you don't want to finish up with a piece that doesn't have um, any stripping on it. So I'm just going to move over to the, iron, uh, to the machine. I don't burn myself. And here we go. So just making sure that those edges are nice and level. And because I've got um, a little tail overhanging, it just allows me to sew onto the actual block itself then. Uh, and it just seems to flow through nicely. Now, because of the size measurement I'm using, it is very important that you do use your quarter of an inch foot. We do need that to be accurate because what we're going to do when we attach the next block, the blocks need to butt up to each other so you don't have any space between them and therefore your quilt sits together beautifully because you don't need them to quilt over it. Okay, so I'll just sew on to red saver and knit that. Okay. So, as you can see now, I've actually sewn that piece on. So what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to trim these edges now off so they are the width of the block, because what we need to do is make sure that the second block is sitting exactly in the right position so that you don't have any steps at the top or the bottom and it just needs to be a continual unit. So I'll just take my ruler and my rotary cutter and I'm just going to lay my ruler to the edge of my block, like so, and I'm just going to rotary cut the little tail off. I'll turn it round and I'll do exactly the same to the opposite side, like so. Now this is your choice whether you prefer to press it at this point or not. I actually like to, but what I'm doing, I'm not pressing the bottom one, I'm not pressing the folded one, I'm only pressing the one that's on the top, the inch one. So I'm just gonna set that seam, just give it a little press and warm it up, just to encourage it to sit over beautifully, like so. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my second block, like so, and see the orientation I'd like it to be. So that works very nicely for me, okay. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll this over and I'm going to position the edge of that one inch strip, the one I've just pressed, onto the edge of the block. And by doing this, you can see, hopefully, that these blocks are sitting on top of each other beautifully. Now again, um, it's up to you if you want to pin it, whether you want to use the magic clips on it, or whether you just prefer to do it without. I'm actually going to pop um, a few pins in there. And once again, this is your choice whether you prefer to sew from the side of the block or the side of the sashing. I personally prefer to sew from the side of the sashing because it, it just means that I can make sure that everything's going to be going through properly. But again, this is personal choice. And once you've done it a couple of times, it becomes very apparent which is more comfortable for you. So I've just pinned that. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew with a quarter of an inch foot, once again, all the way down. So I'm going to take that to the machine. It's very, very quick. And what I do, when I cut these um, strips, um, I tend to cut long strips and then cut them away as I do them. And uh, you form just the whole um, length, strip of the length that you want to go across your quilt. So, just going to back tack on that a little bit. Make sure it's nice and secure at that edge. I'm watching very, very carefully that I keep the edge of my foot on the edge of the block and making sure that that black fabric is butted up right to the edge of it. It's not difficult at all because, because you've got the structure um, because of the wadding in it, it just sits really nicely. Okay. Nip that off, and I'll just take that one off as well. Okay, so what happens when we open this up is we see a really nice, neat piece. I'll just take that thread off there. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to roll that back so you can see what happens. So if I position this, once I open this up. You will be able to see, if I can try and lift this, that these two pieces of wadding meet directly there. There is no overlap and no bulk whatsoever. It sits perfectly, like so. So I'm just going to flip it over to the front and I'm just going to give that a really nice, gentle press, pressing it in the orientation of the strip that we've put on. I'm just going to turn that back and I turn it this way. This is perfect. There's no bulk whatsoever. It's as though it's one piece of fabric, one piece of wadding. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to press the black strip just to warm those threads. And I'm going to press that over. And what happens now is once this is pressed over, That black fabric will cover your stitch line just there. And that actually needs to be slip stitched. I'll just pop a couple of pins in there. So um, this really, this piece needs to be done before you can move on and join the strips together. I'll just pop these in just so you can see how nice and neat it is. So remember the measurement, the strip for the front is one inch and the strip for the reverse side is one and a half inches with it pressed in half. Now, you can see here that that sits really nicely and that's what it looks like from the front. So that's how you do that part. So now that just needs to be slip stitched all the way down or ladder stitched, which is ever your preferred method. So if I just set that aside, 
once you've done it, the best thing to do is to actually construct a whole row. So the full length of the row that you want it to be. Then the next part would be to actually join your rows together. And that is actually done exactly the same way. You can see that these fit beautifully. No problem at all. Because you started off with your squares the same size, and these sessions are all cut exactly the same, they fit together. So all we need to do now is once again, exactly the same thing. So I'll just set that one over there. So this one needs to have, let me just double check that's my inch, that's it. Right, so there we go. I'll cut pieces off of this, just about long enough, I think. Should we have this one? This will do, okay. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pin that. Yeah, that is long enough. Just pop a few pins in the front. Just to hold that in position, making sure that the edge of my black fabric is at the edge of my block. So I'm placing it right side down. And there we go. And then once again, the strip that was one and a half inches, I've already pressed it in half wrong sides together, place it down and place that to the edge of my blocks. I'm just using the pins that I'd already got in position and I'm just pinning it straight away through like so. Straight to the sewing machine. And there we go. Once again, I've already got my thread saver on there, so I'm sewing straight onto it. I'm just going to back tap that because it's the end and I don't want it to come out. Um, also, if anybody is, can see these very, very closely, um, you've probably noticed that I have actually stay stitched the blocks as well. Because I made these blocks a few days ago, I didn't want the edges of the seams to start to open. So what I did, once I completely finished the block and trimmed it to the finished size that I wanted it to be, I've actually uh, done this, uh, increased the length of my stitch on the sewing machine and I've just gone all the way around the edge with a very scant quarter of an inch because those stitches can stay in. If I did a quarter of an inch, and add a little bit of a wobble, they would have showed. So I just do a very, very narrow quarter of an inch so that it holds everything together and nothing is going to go amiss. And then even if I didn't touch it for another 18 months, they would still be fine. So there we go. Let's pop Snip that one off. Just trim that one. Just take that off. And once again, I'll just set that seam. And I'm just going to press that over. So it's nicely pressed to its maximum. I prefer to press it because by pressing it, you are just easing it out that little bit more. And it, only, it might only be a little bit, but it just makes it sit a little bit better. 
So now I've done that, I could actually, uh, I've got another one, here it is. This is the one that I did earlier. So this one's already slip stitched. So this one is going to go here. So all I'm going to do is roll that over. And the reason I'm, I wanted just to go ahead and show you this part of it as well is because now I've rolled this over, I can actually see that these edges all sit beautifully next to each other. But what we do need to make sure is that this line here, I'm going to turn it around so that you can see it hopefully. These here are still in line because what we don't want is that. That would just look odd. These need to be in line. So by laying it over and easing it up to the edge, I can double check to make sure that this joining here is all in line. And that's sitting really, really nicely. So I'll just very quickly And then I'm going to turn it over because I do prefer to work from it with this side, to be honest. Now I know that everything is sitting well. There we go. And I'm, because I know that's sitting perfectly in the middle, I'm going to pop my pin in the middle first just to make sure that I don't get any movement going on there. That's it. And it really does build up well. So again, for those of you that want to start and use some bits and bobs that you've got left over, these quilts can actually look really striking. I've certainly enjoyed doing them. Just pop another couple of pins in here and we are almost done. There we go. I'm just going to do it. It's always worth a double check to make sure that's in line and that looks okay to me. So I'm just going to quickly sew straight away down. Once again, watching to make sure that I'm keeping the edge of my foot, my quarter of an inch foot, on the edge of my black fabric. Like I say, you may prefer to do it from the other side, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And there are other ways of doing this. It's just that this is my preferred way of doing it. You tend to find that through experimenting, doing different ways, you might find that you like doing part of it one way, and then, you know, add in a little bit from another way. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. We all do that. And that's how we learn and achieve. So, once again, I'm hoping if you see this, if I just tweak that, that's sitting completely flat. And this will just roll over and press. Once I, when I do this, I'll be honest with you, I do quite often um, use best press or, um, thank you Alicia. I'm going to actually turn it around the other way, it's easier for me to work this way. I do like to use best press because it just makes it stay where it's meant to be. Um, sometimes I'll use starch as well. So that just now needs slip stitching all the way across. And I'm hoping that you can see this all matches up nicely. And if I turn it over, I think you'll see 
that's worked really well. So that brings us to the end of today's tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do have a go. It's very achievable and you can use up all your bits and bobs. So thank you again and bye-bye for now.